Yes. Well, we're good. good. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. Our, what about recording? All right, welcome to Improvement and Services Committee for August 24th, 2022. Uh, the roll call. Alder Stoyer, I'm here. Alder Weary. Present. Alder Eck. Present. Alder Campbell. Here. All accounted for. Uh, I'd entertain a, a motion for the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Mo motion by X, seconded by Campbell. Uh, Make a motion to, to amend it. Yes, you can go ahead. One, yeah. three, twelve, and then the remainder. So we're going to move up one, three, and twelve to the beginning. So one, three, twelve, and the remainder. All right. Any other discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Remind me if I didn't miss this. All right, next we have approval of the minutes. Entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. By Weary, seconded by Eck. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. On a regular business, number one, consideration with possible action the numerous railroad crossings in the city of Green Bay that are, that are in need of repair and to include railroad companies, including the Canadian National Railroad, in these discussions. This discussion efforts. I brought this up. Uh, a citizen uh, of mine, Richard Perrins, brought this up as well. All the worries talked about this. So uh, I think what initially I'm going to go to Alder Weary and then I'll, I'll get the floor open. So Alder Weary, you you had uh, looked at this as well. Uh, yeah, I think we've, we've all kind of, we've Steve, all Director Grenier kind of exchanged it. emails and think thoughts over the years about how frustrating it can be to get the railroad to fix their crossings and so I'm, I'm glad to keep this on, on an agenda that we can keep talking about and get timelines and see the the uh, grading of the different ones and just hear, hear more about it here from the public. The director, could you add, add anything to that? I realize it's... Sure. It's well, been a, for ahead. those new to the committee, uh, you may not be familiar with what the requirements for <coughs> at-grade rail crossings are, but the repair of at-grade rail crossings is addressed under state statute 86.12 and 86.13. The railroad is obligated to keep crossing in good and safe condition for public travel. The governing body of a municipality may, by resolution, require a railroad company to repair a crossing to such condition. If a railroad company fails to complete those repairs within 30 days after receiving the resolution, the governing body may file a complaint with the Office of Commissioner of Railroads. The Office Commissioner of Railroads then shall investigate and determine the matter in controversy as provided for under Chapter 195 stats, Wisconsin statutes. Green Bay has a long-standing policy, decades long. I've got files up in DPW that go back into the 50s addressing rail crossings. Uh, and that policy that we have, a rail crossing, the, the minimum that's required is referred to as adapt timber header with asphalt as the crossing material between the headers. Uh, they are required to keep that type of a crossing at high volume streets on truck routes, things of that nature. The city requires an upgraded crossing. So it's a rubber panel, a concrete panel, a full timber panel, or a composite type material. Obviously those cost a lot more than a standard crossing does. So it has been the city's policy that the city will purchase those upgraded crossing materials and the Canadian National or whoever the rail company is will install them at their cost. That's the cost share arrangement we've done. The city has, within the last 10 years since, uh, since I became the director, we have expanded that program to the point where the city actually funds the asphalt crossing repairs as well. And that puts us into a different bucket with, uh, with the, the rail companies where we're actually able to get crossings completed a lot more quickly than most other municipalities because we're willing to help uh, offset some of the funding. So we provide the asphalt. Some of the times we actually install the asphalt. Canadian National provides the insurance and they provide the flaggers. Flaggers are running $1,700 a day. And 15? 13. 13. So, well, well the one up on Atkinson was 17. Maybe because that's the rail yard, um, and that's a that's a requirement. It's a federal requirement that we have to have a flagger from the rail company, and we have to pay them whatever that charge is. We have no 
but I'm going to try some. Is that for like a day or more? Uh, usually it's at least one day. Sometimes it's two, depending on how long it takes us to get some of the old crossing materials on. So um, it has been very beneficial for the city. Not only does it keep our costs in check, we're throwing some money at it, um, but it keeps our crossing or our costs in check by not having to take out the railroad insurance and pay for the flaggers. Uh, but again, we're also getting a lot more uh, of our crossings done than other municipalities. As a matter of fact, the Public Works liaison from Canadian National used to be stationed in Stevens Point. She's now in Duluth. Uh, she actually goes around and talks to other uh, government agencies. She's got a five state territory and they use the city of Green Bay as a case study in how to get things done. Good job. Well, and with that being said, okay, we still have crossings here that are in need of repair. So we do work on, uh, on a yearly basis. So Jim is in contact with CN right now. Uh, by September, we're trying to identify the worst crossings in the city and get the regular repairs done. Um, and then again, we'll, we'll buy the, the crossing materials. So we're hoping to have, we wanted one of the worst crossings in town right now is on Oneida Street near the Westside Garage. And we wanted that one done this year. CN just simply doesn't have the, the funding and the availability. They've got crews that have got to go across five states to do the crossings. Um, so we weren't able to get that one in. We're talking to them about potentially putting an asphalt patch over there, pull the timbers out, just put an old-fashioned asphalt crossing in to buy us a year or two until we can get that one programmed. Those types of negotiations or workarounds they're willing to do with us because we're willing to invest some money. If the community simply comes in and says, no, your crossing's in bad shape, uh, and they start going through the OCR process, then you wait and find out what the OCR has to say. And unfortunately, there's no appeal process with Office Commissioner of Railroads. They are the final arbiter. Oh, all the right. Um, so I'm just trying to understand exactly what um, type of motion we'd make on this. Well, you know, I, I, I guess what uh, I wanted Alder, or I wanted Director Grenier to kind of speak to where we're at, the situation that we do have. And I've learned information now, <coughs> him talking to his work with the railroad, and that w we're willing, the city, to put some money up front to work with them. So it sounds like we are moving forward, although I still get from citizens like, oh, wow, this railroad crossing is terrible. It's unbelievable, you know, blah, 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 which is probably true, but. Um, it's better than I thought it was, but it, we still need work to be done. So um, I, I think the big thing I would like out of this would be to have staff eventually get back to us, you know, talk to us about uh, the timeline, maybe have a map or something out there describing uh, the various crossings we do have in the state that they're in. You know, I don't know if you if you grade them, you know, you could say that's a B minus, that's a D plus, whatever. We actually derived just an internal because there is no standardization, right. uh, but we developed an internal. I don't know if it's one through five or one through ten. One through ten, just, one through 10, 10, just like the PACER rating. Okay. Uh, and when we're out every other year doing our PACER uh, ratings on the streets, we do the ratings on the rail crossings as okay. well for prioritization. So the PACERs are done every year, so they'll be done next year, correct? Correct. Every every other year, not number. So, I mean, that, so that would be done along with the roads. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's that's big. That's good to know. Oh, Jim said we do the rail on an even number of years. So we're doing we'll, we'll be doing, doing railroad year. ratings this year. Is that something that could be brought back to the committee in a timely fashion? or how long would, might that take? It depends on when, when we we're actually doing them. I don't know if, if they're going on right now or if they're still slated for the fall, but well, definitely by the end of the year, we would have a rail <coughs> rating stuff and we'd be able to tell you what crossings are out there, what the ratings are. Just what we can expect. Sure. Okay. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, is there somebody that wanted to speak to? Well, there will be, yes. Okay, I just wondered, I, will, I want yes. to make sure we were open before. Alder there. Campbell and just, uh, just to add detail to Alder Stroyer's comments um like you said a map i know he likes maps but even if it's just a individual list of each district just maybe mail them. i don't need to know about his or his or his but just in my district i know there's a couple too that like the boards are popping up now i know they shoved a bunch of 
quick patch in it, but now it's all over their cars, you know? Argument goes on, I know we, we talked about that one there, and you said, that's eh, way down the list, well, yeah. is it gonna get done as I'm all there, or is it, you no, know, that's the process. Now there's a phone number that's on the sign that you're supposed to report something to there. I was literally gonna call the, I don't know if that do anything, but there's a number. There's a number right well, there. I thought I would say, see how my automatic power would do <laughs> on it, but well, I didn't really expect too much. <coughs> it just was, the phone number's there, literally. So I, I think just waiting until the end of the year or, or when you get that information and report back to the committee would be sufficient. I, one other question I'm gonna ask over the floor. Um, Steve, so we got, we've got 24 communities in Brown County, so there's a lot of railroad crossings in other areas. Have you talked with any of the other municipalities as far as issues with them? We're, we're concerned with the city, but let's face it, we do travel in other areas nearby. We have not had any meaningful discussions with the other municipalities relative to rail crossings in about the last five years or so. So you're not sure how what they may be doing themselves? Uh, to the best of my recollection, I don't know that anyone has changed their process. They're still using the standard OCR process as prescribed under state statute. Okay, and that may work or not. Okay. To the, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, we're the only ones who are being proactive, uh, who are taking the approach. Okay, okay. that's good. Can. Now that there are differences as to where that rail crossing happens to lie as well. If that crossing happens to lie on a state trunk highway, then Wistot gets involved and. Typically, WISTA is programming money, so when you bring money to help offset the cost of the, the crossing repairs, they happen much more quickly. Okay, just a few of those. Um, I would entertain a motion open the floor. So I move. Second. So, second uh, by Worry and second by Campbell. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The floor is now open. Come on up. Right up here. Richard, Richard Perrins, 1402 Kellogg Street. Okay. Uh, there are important air, uh, arterials in the, the city, Oneida being one of the real big ones, and the, Mr. Grenier uh, spoke to that. My wife was, uh, someone charged her with their big truck the other, last week at, in a road rage kind of situation when she slowed down for that crossing. We, I no longer go there. I have been driven over that in a couple of few months because it is so terrible. So if there's any way to bring even a, a short-term repair, that would be very desirable. The other part that I always thought, it's right by the city garage. Our vehicles, our city vehicles are trashing their undercarriages and everything else, driving over that. And that's just an ex added expense to the community. But when, they, when that, whoever that was that charged at my uh, wife's car with their truck, because she slowed down to cross that, uh, then it becomes a whole another situation. So um, I would just say get that get that one repaired as in any way possible as soon as possible. Because I've had people get, honk at me and carry on because I slow down for it. I don't want to trash my vehicle. I don't go over that thing at the, the normal speed. So um, now I am going to say to the upside to this, the crossing over on military, just north of Velp, was just replaced and they did a beautiful job. So I know it's doable and there are other streets that are less well-traveled that they've, they've called on and uh, they, they've done, such as, uh, um, oh, not Taylor, but uh, Taylor's one of them. But anyway, to the point, I did call the number on the sign. <laughs> they called me back. Thank you very much for your call. That was all I ever got from them. <laughs> because, you know, I thought, well, what the hell? I'm Let's try it. I get time. So uh, get on that one, and it, I'm glad you're identifying the rest of them because uh, it really is a hazard, especially in a community that has a lot of winter travel. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So anybody else to speak to this? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to close the floor. Second. No, I'll, okay, I'll make a motion. Second, <laughs> <laughs> I know, normally don't. I'll do it this time. Just second by Campbell. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll probably get called on that. Oh, okay, so next we've got three.
three, correct? We're moving up to number well, three. We didn't do we need that motion. No. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You're right. Motion. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to refer to staff to report back the uh, railroad crossing ratings and replacement timetable. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion by Gwery, seconded by Beck. And all in yeah. Any yeah. other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you for that, and Director. And, and if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'd yep. Steve, you said we were going to try and do something temporary with Oneida because I know that's in my district, so I get obviously the most, most calls about it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, whatever you can do, work your magic over there. You greatly appreciate it. All right. West okay. side, west side okay. first. Starting from the west, going to the east. Is it just a simple request, or do we have to have something written to get get a temporary one done? No, that, that's a matter of us just working collaboratively with CN to make sure that they're in town. Again, that track crew is, is covering five states, and we need to get that back here. But I've had a conversation with the track supervisor already, yeah. and he knows what I want to do, and we're trying to get that okay. okay. temporary fix. Were you oh, asking about the temporary? Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we still need to work with them on the temporary? We wait for the crew to be here. Is there anything we can Correct. Do? No, there's nothing. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Um, Put a jump over it? Well, this is where little old Green Bay, we have to start worrying about federal, okay? Uh, railroads are governed by the federal, the interstate uh, commerce clause. So you are literally dealing with constitutional law when you start messing with a, with a railroad on federal property. And their right of way is, for all intents and purposes, the way we should think of it, that's sovereign territory. We can't enter that uh, under penalty and we would get sued. <coughs> but we can beg, cajole, plead. Oh, we've already done all that. I know. Call, call the number? It's got well, a season <laughs> ticket box, what do you mean? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, like I said, I've already been in contact okay. with the track supervisor. He knows that I want this done this year, okay. and he's trying to swing the crews back here. You guys, you've well, been so creative on how to do it already, maybe you can think of the next step. <laughs> 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 oh, what's, the, what's the next thing that we can do to make buddy call? Packer tickets? Uh, Tell them the committee, the committee <laughs> wants it too. So that anyway, all right, thank you, uh, Mr. Perrins, for your, for your testimony. All right, we're going to move on to number three, consideration with possible action on a request from the property owner at 1146 South Maple Avenue, parcel 1756, lot one, for general deferment of payment special assessments associated with the reconstruction of South Maple Avenue in 2023 due to unbuildable lot of inadequate size for any proposed improvement in accordance with ordinance section 3441, subsection A, subsection 3. So I know we have somebody here to speak to that, but Director, do you want to start this? Well, and this may actually, depending on how the conversation goes, this may preempt uh, <coughs> the petitioner's request to speak. But what I handed out to you uh, prior to the meeting, the small uh, map with kind of the triangularly shaped parcel. Sure. The triangularly shaped parcel is parcel 1-756. Previously, that had been two parcels, so what is shown in there um, in red as lot one and lot two, those had been separate parcels. Had they remained separate parcels and not joined through a CSM, lot one would have been exempt from pavement assessment because it is too small to build on. It becomes an unbuildable lot. By combining the two parcels, the combined parcel is buildable because lot two obviously has a building on it. However, the frontage in front of lot one still remains unbuildable. It only benefits lot two. So, pursuant to chapter thir or section 34.41 of Green Bay Municipal Code, general deferments of special assessments, uh, sub A, undeveloped lands, sub three, Deferments may be granted for street improvement, pro, uh, street improvement assessments if the property subject to the levy is determined by the council to be unbuildable due to inadequate size or area for development or an elevation preventing reasonable access to the proposed improvement. Uh, staff concurs that the area that's described as lot one does remain unbuildable and we concur that as such this should be uh, considered by Common Council for a general deferment. What that would mean is when South Maple Avenue is constructed in 2023, lot or parcel 1-746 would show an assessment uh, front footage 
of 69.72 feet and a deferral on 134.43 feet. So I, will, I was believe this? that this is not a residential parcel, so there is a partial assessment for other than residential mm -hmm. that would not be covered by the vehicle registration fees, uh, which is why this uh, it is of concern to the property owner. So when, when did this become a CSM? I mean, that I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Okay, I know uh, unless the community has something else, we do have somebody here to speak to that, correct? Mm -hmm. So I would make a, have a motion made to open the floor. I'd make a motion to open the floor. By Second. Second. Seconded by Campbell. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. All right, thank you for aye. coming in. State well, your name and address for the record, and then we'll get to it. Okay, my name is Steve Thoe, and I own the property at 1146 South Maple. Uh, when I bought the property, uh, is that your address or what's oh, your address? Well, no, my address is 330 Miramar Drive. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, when I bought the property, there was two separate parcels, and um, they combined them when they rezoned it. And when was that? <laughs> no, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, you some know, time I, ago. I, some time ago, and uh, again, that property is just unbuildable. It's a little corner piece that goes all the way to the end of the road. And originally it was just a separate lot, and so I feel like it, I shouldn't have to pay the commercial rate to, for the street improvement because it's so, you so can't do anything with it. Are you, you know? paying? So you're paying taxes on both of those, right? And they combine them basically just to, so I wouldn't get a separate tax bill. You oh, know, I had talked to somebody and he said, "Why don't we just combine them okay, while so we're doing this?" So you're okay with that in a sense? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're also sorry, Mr. Chairman, and you heard the explanation how it will be exempted now? Yeah. That's well, what you yeah, want. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. You were smiling back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did see it. Change your mind. Go the other way. No. <laughs> Does anybody have any comments or questions? I mean, we, we, we'd have to uh, close the floor first. Is there anything else that you wanted to no. add to that? Okay. No. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for coming in. Okay. Uh, motion. Close the floor. Close the floor. Uh, Second. Seconded by Act. All in favor, please say aye. Yeah. Aye. aye. All opposed? <laughs> Committee, I don't know. It sounds like it's been yeah, taken just, care of. I just wanted to clarify. Yes. Um, do we need to vote to do that, or this is yes. what is going to happen? We don't. Vote okay. has to be an action by the, uh, by the committee, which is approved by the council. Okay. So. I, re I uh, make a motion to approve the deferment of the pavement special assessment. Okay. As listed under. All right. Motion second. Second. Is that good enough? Yep. Okay. We have a motion by X, second by Campbell. Any other discussion? All, all in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. 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 All opposed? And that will go to City Council on Tuesday for final approval, but, you know, if you care to, but generally speaking, it goes pretty well, normally. So thanks for coming. Thanks for your patience. All right. All right. So number 12, correct? Yep. Number 12, consideration with possible action on the request to consider alternatives to overnight on-street parking ban ordinance to allow overnight on-street parking held at the June 22nd, 2022 Improvement and Services Committee meeting. Alder Weary, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll you start and then we'll get <laughs> staff Thanks. involved. I know we've discussed this and talked this one to death, but I know there's people here to talk, so if it's all right, I'm just gonna open the floor, make a motion open the floor. Okay. Second. By weary, seconded by deck. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, the floor is now open. So, if anybody would like to speak to this, come on forward. Okay, you get a pop. Yeah. It's different advice to throw out. Wait till she gets up here, then I'll close the floor. Huh? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you know? I said, wait till you get up here, then I'll motion to close the floor. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, you want to get there. He's, he's a funny guy. <laughs> well, maybe so, not. Hi, my name is Annette Chavez, 1070 Shadow Lane. We were here last month. Um, the only thing I have to add from last month, because I'm sure you have all that, um, Mrs. Eck, is that how you say your name? Mm -hmm. You know how you were saying, because you want, you want, and I know you talk about having the parking because your family is getting older. See, when we bought our land, this, and I have nothing against anybody, when we had bought our per area, we all loved our area, we lived right by this pack or stadiums, you know, we're a block away. We never saw the changes. When we were out there, there was restaurants there, clothing stores. The last 10 years, it changed to all these bars that are there, and now these houses, People are leaving their properties. We won't even know who our neighbors are some other time because everybody's selling their houses now. 
for these Airbnbs. So they're driving away all the good homeowners that we had that we knew. We never saw that coming. You didn't have a crystal ball, we never thought it would ever change. Ten years ago, you couldn't even some of those people didn't even want to buy. They said they were empty for a long time. So I know you used to have older kids. When you bought your house, you knew your kids were going to grow up, right? Um. Course. And you, yes. you, you, don't want, you don't want to move now, I gather, right? Because you like your area, you like your neighbors. It's like we do we like our neighborhood, we love our neighbors. But you knew your kids were going to grow up. They weren't going to stay alone. You knew they were going to get driver's license. So, like, you know, if I had said to you, why didn't you just move? Or why didn't you move before your kids got to that thing? You know, <laughs> not to be sarcastic, this, please don't, you know, but this is an example. And we don't want to move either. We love our neighborhood, you know? We never saw the changes. But we just need something with this crazy parking. If you want, I can show you a picture of how crazy it gets on some of these parking days. Um, this is just one example. I have hundreds of pictures in here. People on the grass, over the sidewalks. This is one picture, if you want to see. Am I allowed to come up? Yeah, go ahead. This is one picture of how our street gets on the weekend. We know none of these neighbors. None. These are all these party houses that are crazy, and they block everything that we have. They park in the middle of our area. We can't even have a get together. Do they stay overnight sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So there we go. I mean, do you guys need to see it? Yeah. No, no, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. 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 Okay. That is, that is only Steve's one. Was <laughs> I mean, that is only one incident, and it's almost like every weekend. We can't even enjoy to go outside. I have people videotape cussing and swearing all day long and all night long because they drink all day and they party all night, you know? <laughs> So we don't yeah. know what to do about the situation either. Like I said, we like our neighborhood. We don't want to move. <laughs> I want to retire pretty soon <laughs> and enjoy my time. So are you looking for just keep, a parking keep, period? Or I would attempt, like I said, I last time I'd like to have long parking from two to six. I wish okay. it was even longer. You know, and I know it's even last year I had called the police department. The utility department didn't have to come to come through and one officer said she wouldn't give any tickets out for the parking period of five because they weren't making any noise and it wasn't a nuisance. Even though it's the law, she wasn't going to give any tickets. Mm -hmm. Then the parking utility had to come through and they talked and then she, he did come down and give the tickets. They come a little bit later in the neighborhood. Well, that's your but they park on the grass and I don't know what is the rule for parking. How much How much can they be parked on the grass before they get a ticket? Is it a wheel, you half like for a car? A, for a ball game? No, no even at, 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 any, any Anything, weekend. any event? Any, how much are they allowed? I, I could give you a, a rule of thumb by ordinance, if you purely go black and white, you cannot touch the grass with a wheel. But our, our parking people, you know, if for the front front yard setback, if you're off of pay, uh, an approved, improved, approved, improved paved driveway, and say with two wheels, and it's not mudded up, we'll, we'll, we'll issue a warning. Because it could be, okay, they just happen to get off the grass, or it's just like a one-night thing. But if, you, if we can tell, and you can tell if it's a routine, the grass starts getting mashed down, it's this, this long compared to you know, the grass tanks with that long, you know that they're driving on, or it's rutted and muddy, two wheels or not, oh, or, I have or, list or, you. or they get a citation. I, don't, I have a list for you for just a few years. So it is, okay. Um, okay, that's, I know they can't get every house. I mean, I do appreciate they have been coming a lot more now, even during the week, because the other day there was Wednesday and the cars were parked outside. So I just asked that they could come Thursday. I sent it, I'm a past the email person. I sent the email saying this car was parked. These cars were parked already on the Wednesday night, overnight already, you know. And one had a, one had a trailer and a, yeah, a trailer and a car, trailer and a truck actually, and they take up the whole spot. And it's not in front of the place that they're renting. That's the same. It's not where they're renting. It's in front of everybody else's place. <coughs> the right well. people are here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well. very, very responsive. Thank All the you. Word. Yeah. Is there anything else? Otherwise, I'll, anybody else to speak to this? Anybody else? Hi. <coughs> uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, address. Oh, sorry. Yeah. My name is yeah. Tricia Garrison. I live at 1260 Thorndale okay. Avenue. It's okay. Thorndale Street in Green Bay. Uh, yes. Thank you uh, to the committee for allowing the opportunity to uh, speak before you tonight. Um, so I am the homeowner at 1260 Thorndale Street. Uh, my family has owned this house since 1959. Uh, so we're one of the first houses um, in that greater Green Bay Packer neighborhood, if you will. Um, so again, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak tonight. Um, as you know, the neighborhood has evolved a lot over the years, um, which is great for economic development uh, for the community and such. 
um, I would tell you that um, you know there's many Airbnbs that are popping up, but there's also families. Um, I've got a daughter who's a ch in high school. Um, there's other families on the street as well. There's a school at the end of the street. Um, so I guess I would offer that I, I would be opposed to um, unrestricted parking at all times. Um, however, I, I saw the, the news today that there are concerns of certain families in certain parts of the city. Um, and that must be awful for them that they don't have enough parking. So I guess what I would offer is that, uh, my point of view is that I would, I would kindly uh, request that there not be unfettered, unrestricted parking uh, due to safety concerns for the families. However, I would offer an alternative that perhaps you could consider offering a permit um, to those homes which would need uh, parking because uh, I completely respect, I, I don't know what that would be like if I didn't have a, a garage at, at our house. Um, I, I really like this uh, alternative option of offering um, a permit which would be tied to a homeowner because I feel that that would uh, have a, a piece of accountability back to the homeowner. Um, as my um, neighbor was just pointing out, um, we do have a number of uh, visitors in our neighborhood on a, a quite frequent basis who are from out of town, right? No accountability. Um, my home, I did have an attempted break-in um, at my home a few years ago uh, during a Packer game. Uh, it was a drunk. Uh, we chose not to prosecute because he was from out of state. It wouldn't have gone anywhere. Um, so what I'm telling you is that there, there are increasing safety concerns which come from these large events and these large uh, you know, attractions which bring people from out of town. Um, so. I really feel very strongly that there needs to be accountability tied to the homeowner. So I would just kindly offer that as maybe an alternative to consider. Um, allowing, if, if you feel, if you guys feel this is a really important issue that you need there to be parking, I totally respect that. Just offering that alternative that right. maybe you do permits so there would be accountability and that would be out of respect for the safety of the families that do live here. Uh, um, it sounds like as I said last time, this, there's like a whole bunch of issues going on with both of your situations. And um, I'm not sure how a permit would help if these are people from out of town that are parking on the street and they don't care, you know, they're, they're just parking. And um, anybody can park all day long and it's not a problem. You showed a picture, it looked like it was during the day. Okay, so it's yeah. like it's during the day, and you so yeah. you have a lot more issues to deal with on your street in your area. Um, but I'm not, I just, I, I don't see how the permit would help that, that's all I'm For thinking. the overnight, I should have clarified, those, I'm so sorry. Uh, For the overnight, yeah, the daytime, we, we are making peace with it, and we just, it is what it is. Well, but I mean, the because overnight would bring significant more security concerns. But families. a lot of them are out of town, is what I'm saying. Well, and if you allowed overnight, I guess I'm, my my uh, point I'm trying to make is about overnight parking. Um, so, you know, because right now daytime parking is allowed, and that's fine. You know, I, I get that. Um, but if you are to move to allow overnight parking, I would request that alternative be considered to have permits so that there is an accountability piece that ties back to the homeowner. Okay, I think we're going to be looking at a few things, but uh, Mother Worry, is there something else no. on this right offhand? We brought this, we, this has come up several times over the last number of years for different reasons, but I think we, we understand the acute issue around the stadium area. We do understand that, and it, it's kind of evolved differently, so that that's just part of the equation. You know, and the thing is, I've talked to Director Dernier about this too, and uh, it'd be kind of an all or nothing type of thing if we did this. You know, it'd be the whole city, not just areas. You know, sometimes you could look at Central City, for example. Smaller lots, single stall garage, three cars, very difficult. But, you know, if you did it for that area, you'd have to do it for the whole area. And to monitor that would be very, very difficult. So that, that's one of the issues that, that we're coming up with. But we'll, we'll discuss it. So, any other questions for Trisha? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for much. coming. Is there anybody else to speak to this? I wasn't, oh, Janet Angus, 1403 Shirley Street. I was not planning on speaking tonight. However, I was approached by a number of people over in the Lombardi area, close to the stadium, 
who asked if I would come down because they were not able to be here. So um, I think the overnight on street parking ban is interesting. And I haven't been privy to any of these covered any of these meetings beforehand, so I apologize if I'm going over something you've already considered. Um, I do know that in high density areas in other cities, I know how that works. And what other cities, specifically Chicago, what they do down there is they have a parking permit that you can get if you live in that area. So if you live in area, resident area number one, say hypothetically, you can purchase a parking permit for X number of dollars a year. Minimal amount, $50, $100, $25. Or maybe you can even get a free permit. And then that would be for the cars that are located at that home that you feel are going to be parked on the street. And then what happens is if you have guests come, you can come down. And in Chicago, the alderman jobs are full time. And they have a full time office. You go to your alderman's office and you are given a packet of passes. And you can use those for a year. So if you have people that come to your house and you live in district number one, if you're in a very popular district, those packets are worth, you know, they're golden. People really like you if you're in a popular district. But you can get a pass, put it on your car, and then that car has the ability to park on that street for 24 hours. So if you park at 3 p.m., you have the ability to park on that street till the next day at 3 p.m. Um, but then there's the snow removal rules because, you know, if you go to, like, no more overnight parking, or people can park all ov overnight, what do you do about snow? You're going to have a lot of problems. Um, just my humble opinion. You're going to have towing. You're going to have cars. Your cars will be buried. You're going to have people going out there trying to shovel their cars out because they're buried by the snow plows. And, and then, you know, how are you going to move them? And how are you going to get around those cars? And then and go on and on about the snow. The snow is just going to be an issue. Um, and then they do have some streets in each district or each area that you can park on for 24 hours. So in Chicago, for instance, a lot of people will come in, park close to an L stop, park there for free all day on those free streets, and take the L into the city. And they avoid paying $20, $30 parking, you know, parking costs for the day. Just, just an idea of how another community, especially in a high density area such as downtown, um, our downtown, might do it. So, but you know, do you want to charge people? Maybe. I mean, it would be a revenue building thing if you want to go down that that way. But maybe you give everybody who lives in the house they apply for a permit. They they get a permit. They put it on their car, and then. Um, that's a way to monitor people that can park on the street because they're part of that neighborhood or that area. So otherwise, you know, what do you do with people who just want to park there? And I, I mean, I, we could go over 20 different scenarios, but that's all I have. I well, thought I would add. Well, Janet, I was going to ask on the, uh, when you said you had the 24-hour pass, are they color-coded, like for a, per day? Like if it was the next day, what if they decided to stay another day? Um, just you have to change one? the pass. Right, so it's but you, you have to have access to the path, so yeah. yeah. So there's, then, a way, there's ways to follow that. And then they do have to put up parking signs everywhere to say no parking on snow days because, you know, we're going to plow the snow on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You know, so Tuesdays you can't park on this side of the street and Wednesdays you can't park on that side of the street. And if your car is there, then it gets towed. I mean, it's a nightmare with signs. So, and what are you going to do about snow removal? I mean, we have a lot of snow in Green Bay sometimes. So if you're going to allow overnight parking, I don't know. I mean, right now you don't have to really deal with the cars, I wouldn't think. But if you have people that are parking on the streets, I don't most, know. Most of the issue, no. all the rent, go ahead. Um, the, as far as the pass for 24 hours, it seems extremely inconvenient. <laughs> I'm just going to say, to have to go down and get a pass for every time I want to do that. Cause no, they give you a, a packet of them, of like 20 or 30. And then when somebody yeah. comes to your house to visit, you go, oh, Here's your pass, otherwise you can't park on my street. So on popular streets, you might have to have, you know, passes for, for those things. But then, yeah, it's it's an issue. But in a high-density area, I mean, I, I think where 
I live on the west side, it's probably not an issue. Downtown Green Bay, where one people might not even have parking, or they might have, you know, a garage, or I don't know. Then, you know, how do you address that? I mean, all of a sudden, somebody has five cars. Are you just gonna? Are they just gonna take up five spots on the street continuously, and cars are never gonna move? I don't know. It just seems like it's gonna be but complicated. A lot of it was the some of the smaller homes in the central city with a single stall garage, three cars, that type of thing. That's usually where it's come up with these issues. So. Well, but as far as the snow, that would, that's something we're going to talk that's about. The snow, that's a whole different mm -hmm. animal. Mm -hmm. But the permitting, at least, you know, over in the Lambeau District area, I could see where people would park, bring a car over, park it a day ahead of time, take up all the parking on the streets over there. And you might not be able to get in and out of your houses for those particular days because that's kind of what people do. You know. Um, well, maybe this isn't not a question for you, but um, Director Goodyear. Is there else so for I guess I'm going to wait and ask him. Yeah. Is there anything else I just brought up the passes and the permits because I thought it was an interesting, okay. you know, interesting thing to kind of look at to maybe at least keep neighbors and neighborhoods safer with you know the, the passes and still giving people the opportunity to have those passes but you because you have to call in right now so if you want to park more than you know you have to call you have to call the number and right. you get a the ability to like park your car there overnight so or something but um but and instead of calling you can put the little tag in your thing and then the meter lady can come along and give everybody tickets if they don't have the parking pass on them that could be a rever revenue generating I don't, but anyway, for whatever it's worth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other? Anybody else to speak to this? Uh, one more thing. One more. Okay. One more. Sec for the second time. I just have to ask a question. Um, last, I think it was last week. We could have. We all got letters in the mail about parking in that area around. You know, Lambo. This right. That was so, so do all the homeowners get that? Yeah, it goes up to about twelve hundred. Uh, uh, houses in that immediate impact area. The, the greater the stadium district. So yeah. those Airbnbs, they should be passing that on to their renters, right? Should be. Because yeah, I know that's in bold Most letters. In the that's in big bold letters. Because I know the one across the street tells them three times about parking. About not parking on game days, right? Uh, anytime. That, oh. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. anytime. Parking in the street, parking yeah. over the sidewalks, parking on the grass. She, she tells them three times. She tells them three times. You know, it's not well, just because that game. was going to be my question yeah. about. I thought that there w was a policy you can't park on the. Oh, you know what? That's Ashwaubenon. They put out street signs. You can't park near a game day. Yeah. So I'm thinking that they have all these things, and because the person last week yeah. got upset because he got a ticket for parking. Yeah. The three of them got upset for parking on the street at 1081. So then they pulled their cars on the grass. And I know you told us this from. Uh, so the game was on Friday night, so it's 12 p.m. Thursday night till 12 p.m. Friday night. Correct. Right? The day of the game. Right. So they were still there all night Friday night, and then Saturday, I sent the thing about being, they parked there all day, all night Friday night, and all night Saturday night, they were on the grass. So. So what, what you know, I mean, what happens in a case like yeah. that? I mean, do you, I mean, you sent the letter out. It's an enforcement. You know, if they get a license number, you can go out. In a case like that, if it's a Friday night game, or if they're playing the Sunday night game during the regular season, Strict interpretation would be midnight on the day of the game, but well, right. our staff is trying to be reasonable as well. If it's somebody staying that night, get your car off the lot by 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock the morning after the game. If they're there throughout the entirety of the next day, and they were, that's and what they were. Then we're good on. would expect you would call. You would call then maybe if the, the city's not around, or if you're working, or whatever. I sent emails over. I'm a pain in the butt. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Well, do we have any, any other questions? Otherwise, that's it. Yes. Okay. All right. I would entertain a motion Thank to close the floor. Second. No, I'll motion. Oh, motion. Make the motion. You make the motion. Oh, sorry. You didn't want to speak. Oh, no, you oh okay. Make the <laughs> so we're close the floor. Second. Second. By act. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All. Okay. That passes. All right. We're back to open session. Uh, close. <laughs> close. We're open. Right? In a way, we're open, right? Because we're talking. Session. All right, go ahead. Uh, okay, so we've again provided you tonight a copy of the 
uh, the four page report that uh, operations director of parking and bureau have put together. Um, you know, what it really boils down to is on page four, we uh, we identify what the probable consequences are of eliminating the on street parking ordinance. Uh, it would increase on street parking volume around the clock. Uh, businesses and apartment complex uh, may not provide adequate, adequate off street parking per the zoning ordinance because their guests and residents could then park on the street 24 7. Uh, resident complaints regarding elimination of order uh, for the city's on street parking program. The need to modify snow removal citation and towing processes. That's, it's no, you know, you heard from some of the residents tonight, snow removal would be a problem. Um, more often than not, in the 10 years that I've been the director, snow removal operations have started between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. One of our more frequent starts for a plow operation is uh, one o'clock in the morning, sometime between midnight, one will start a plow operation. Figuring right around two and a half to three hours for the uh, snow fleet to complete their primary assignments. Uh, by about 3 a.m., 3.30, we are redeploying those assets and we're entering residential districts and that's where this would be the most problematic. Um, folks have mentioned towing. The only time that we are legally authorized to tow is when a formal declaration of snow emergency has been made. That is a declaration that comes from our office. Um, we don't take that responsibility lightly. So it has to be a major event before we declare a snow emergency because it carries the threat uh, of towing the vehicle. And once that vehicle is towed, it goes to impound. You've got to pay to get it back. Um, what you will wind up with is vehicles plowed in. What you will wind up with is vehicles damaged uh, as the plows are trying to go around it, either from the snow coming off or accidental strike because when we've got a grader out there with a wing, uh, between the bolt board and the wing, we're hanging almost 14 feet iron off the side of that piece of equipment. It's kind of hard to see that outboard edge. Uh, and we are trying during every plow event to get everything back to the curb as close as we can because as that snow sloughs back off of the off of the pile we start plugging up the gutter and the road starts getting narrow as accumulation gets in there um, once we're done plowing um, we have to come back and do cleanup on subsequent days if there are vehicles parked on the street we've had to plow around and if we get a when heavy snowfall or a snowfall that's either preceded by or followed end of the end of the event, we get freezing rain and then the temperature drops. That stuff's gonna adhere to the street and if we've plowed around the vehicle, we're not getting it back up and now we've got a mess to deal with that we're gonna have to live with either until we get a thaw enough that we can scrape it or until spring. So there's a lot of issues relative to snow uh, and we can't just call it snow emergency every time we get two inches. Um, increasing the sight distance obstructions at driveways and intersections, it makes it very unsafe for people backing out of driveways. Uh, increased number of vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle conflicts. Uh, a lot of times that outermost portion of the roadway, especially in residential neighborhoods, that's where people are riding bicycles. If they've got to pop out to go around parked vehicles, that increases the incidence for vehicle, uh, motor vehicle, bicycle. Uh, strikes, reduced roadway traffic movement space, uh, affecting emergency movement, uh, emergency vehicle movement on narrow streets, uh, especially in a dark condition like 3 to 5 a.m. Uh, if you have an emergency vehicle like a fire truck or an ambulance, even an ambulance coming down the street trying to dodge through those cars makes it difficult. Uh, increased chances of blocked mailboxes, driveways, trash and recycling timber carts due to vehicles being parked on the street. Uh, our, our sanitation section starts at 6 a.m. And that's one of, several elders call me on a weekly basis. <laughs> not everybody, that, every not week, not but us. <coughs> an alder, one alder may call this week, another alder calls a different week, saying that they've turn. received a, a call from a resident that their street was missed for garbage no. or recycling pickup. It wasn't me. <laughs> a lot of no, it, it happens to a lot of alders. No, it's not just the residents are calling, and so we go out and we'll respond to that. But a lot of times, when there's a miss, 
either the resident didn't have the card out early enough, um, or when we came to pick up, there was a car park that we couldn't get the truck in there. So we can't get in and grab those carts uh, when we've got vehicles parked there. And again, we start at 6 a.m. So um, homeless and intoxicated people sleeping in cars going unnoticed, that does happen. Uh, unknown proper, uh, complaints from residents of unknown vehicles parking in front of properties, increased on-street parking volume in residential areas near large employers at night, uh, same thing, we'll have parking of convenience. So an area that I can give you as an example uh, would be on Elizabeth and Morrow. There's a large employer there in the middle of uh, a residential neighborhood. Rather than parking somewhere inconvenient, you'd be able to park on the street in front of somebody's house uh, and then go in for shift work. Uh, difficulty in identifying abandoned vehicles. We can't enforce our abandoned vehicle ordinance because we don't know if the vehicle is abandoned, disabled, if it's parked on the street. It could be parked there for three weeks and we don't know if it moved during the day or not. If we go out at three, between three and five a.m. and we see the same vehicle more than three days in a row, good probability, especially if there's three tickets on the vehicle, good probability that it's inoperable and that gives us the ability to at least have uh, police or inspection follow up with the property owner to find out if it's an abandoned or uh, inoperable vehicle. Police department has identified uh, their ability to identify suspicious vehicles during that three to five. They're not supposed to be there, so if the vehicle's there, first thing they do is check to see if there's a permission granted. If not, it gives police the opportunity to investigate why that thing is, uh, why that vehicle is there. Um, there is a higher opportunity of theft from vehicles on the street are a lot easier to get to versus in a driveway. And then the 800 pound gorilla that's in the room that we don't like to talk about, but we, must, we need to acknowledge, parking division is a special revenue fund, which means we are not taxpayer supported. We balance our books on the activities that we do. So there is no levy support that goes into the parking division at all. Parking citations for vehicles on street between the hours of 3 and 5 a.m. generates about $270,000 a year in citation revenue. We would have to find a way to offset that. In addition to what we've talked about, um, we talk about snow, and one of the things that gets lost in the conversation pretty easily is summertime activities. We do a significant amount of our residential street sweeping at night as well. We have a full, uh, full suite of street sweepers who work exclusively at night. And the reason that they do that is because at night there's no vehicles on the street. We can get to the curb and gutter and we can pick that, in, uh, that material up. That is to help us achieve compliance with our MS4 permit with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. So all that fine material that we don't want getting into the storm sewer collects in the gutter and eventually tries to work its way down towards the inlets. That's where the street sweepers are operating at night, picking that material up so that we don't get those pollutants going into stormwater in the rivers, the bay, what that. I would buy that, I'd buy that, uh, that willing. Uh, like at Schwab and, in, uh, and other of our satellite communities around here don't have the same requirements because they're smaller communities, but we have those state and federal requirements for street sweeping so that it is very important to have our streets accessible for our sweepers. Would That's there be a problem, let's say if you had parking on one side of the street and you came through with your street sweepers, I suppose you might think it's inefficient because you can only do one side of the road, you couldn't do the other side, you'd have to do that another time, you'd have to adjust your routes, blah blah, things on that order too. Right. So, right. Alder Eck? I have a lot. In you response, to what, well, you oh. had a lot. Of, you listed I mean, you a, lot. Have a lot. I have a lot to say. Seconds. Thirty seconds. I thought no. I had five minutes. No. Um, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yes. um, you have more. Go yeah. Oh. yeah I, I think our street sweeper goes through at midnight, so <laughs> around there anyway. Seems like it wakes me up, but um, <laughs> so cars <coughs> could be parked at times when the street sweeper is going out because the ban is only from three to five, but. As um, far as snow, uh, I looked up a lot of different municipalities just to get, get an idea of what other, other um, you know, municipalities are doing about that. Some say no parking between November 1st and either March 31st or April 1st, 
and you know I thought well, that's a good idea or doing the even odd something like that um, and then of course the snow emergency or on days of snow use your common yeah, sense right. people but um, and as far as the the um, tipper cards and things like that again you know people that it's a common sense thing they shouldn't be parking in front of their thing or the neighbors in front of you know it, it's one of those things but um, I, I just there was a lot to unpack with what you said and trying to you know think of each thing in response to it but I think that there's a way to do it but there, as far as the revenue building um, well then and I believe you had asked Alder Weary about wouldn't that then have less of a need for staff and so therefore reducing those costs I don't think we would have a lesser need for staff um, relative to the garbage carts. One of the things that we keep coming back to is in the inner city, the, the core of the city, where you've got this, okay, those smaller lots have 50 feet of frontage. Our garbage truck is a lot of, we're still using the, a lot of Peterbilt, right? Right. So Peterbilt 320s. Uh, Peterbilt 320 has a turning radius of about 60 feet, which means it drives like a truck. Okay. If you've got 50 feet of frontage and your car is 17 feet long and you have two of them out there, I need about 35 feet for the truck itself. I need the maneuvering room to get it in. I need the maneuvering room to get it back out and I need at least three feet to grab the garbage cart and I've got to grab the recycling cart. I've used up almost 50 feet that I need just to get the garbage truck to swing in there. So it's not like you're taking a car and swinging in and then throwing the garbage by hand and swinging it back out. We're dealing with the garbage truck. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned other municipalities with their winter hours. I'm glad you brought that up because what we're hearing, uh, what we hear as justification for eliminating the on-street parking ban is there's a need. And our point always has been, if there's a need, does that need suddenly disappear on November 1st and reappear on August, April 1st? That's what if the not, then that need, needs, that need exists year-round, right? So either the need is there or it's not. We currently have a process, and I think people have alluded to that. There is a process where if you call in, you get up to six instances per year. Each instance could be as much as two weeks, as long as it's consecutive, um, where you can simply call in, report your license plate number, and you get a free pass. Okay, it, We're not handing you a pass. It's a, it's a virtual pass, uh, but you get a pass and it's free. One of the, one of the, the individuals who spoke tonight talked about some accountability for the person who's parking on the street. Well, that's it. You have some skin in the game. You have to call in. There's some responsibility that that person requesting to park on the street has to exercise. Um, in addition to that, anyone who has a true need for more than the six instances per year has the ability to petition the Improvement Service Committee to come in, demonstrate that need, and the committee can take action to provide an exemption. Now, we provide those exemptions for a one-year basis, and every year you have to come in and re-demonstrate that need because we've had folks say that it was for a caregiver and the individual needing the care was no longer resident in the home. Okay, but well, we're not going to continue to allow that to happen if, there, if the need is gone again. Um, Chris, I think we indicated that those blanket exemptions, there are approximately between 33 and 38,000 residential properties in the city of Green Bay, and I think right now we have five, five exemptions like that, that we've granted for that idea. So, I mean, it, it's out there, and there have been a number of folks who've come in and said, we have somebody providing in-home care for my mother, um, and they've been granted that exemption. And then we follow up and either mom has moved to somewhere else or situations change where they no longer have the care caregiver coming over and then um, that permission has been rescinded. So we feel it, it's parking division's uh, contention 
that the processes that we have in place, we're able to manage the requests that we're currently receiving, so we see no need to change the, the larger ordinance. So a quick addition to what Steve just mentioned. A couple years ago, I did a uh, call, call your neighbors, see what they're doing type of survey. Uh, Green Bay metro area. And Green Bay and De Pere is, is year-round bad. De Pere's 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. or 3 to 5. But uh, Bellevue, Howard, Alloway, and Ashwaubenon all, all uh, prohibit that overnight on street parking. Basically, you have 2 to 6, 2 to 6, 2 yeah, it's all, all those four communities are 2 to 6 during winter months. In addition to that, um, I was it, it was interesting to find out that um, Alloway says we grant no exceptions, so I don't care if you have your family coming in for a funeral, so to speak. You cannot park on the street at night. Um, and the other three communities said few to rare will be granted an exception. You got to be bleeding no. out. Um, so, so uh, again, uh, just to, to mimic what uh, copy what Steve was saying, parking dealers. It's taken us a lot of years to get to develop our program uh, for exceptions, and we get up to up to ninety thousand calls a year on hey. ABC 123, I'm parking in front of 123 Smith Street. It's my house. And we grant it, but, but we accommodate that. If, if we have a license, a license plate um, surveys, well, you know, we're actually going to get getting a license plate recognition software to help identify the vehicles quicker as you're going out there. Yep, he's, they're legit. It's where I am, leave him alone. Um, so, um, but, you know, we'll go down the street, and right now it's, it's just on a punch it in, into the pad to, to understand that. They're there. They don't need the tag. It's 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 a virtual tag. Not for winter though, right? Winter is taboo all the way nope. around. No, for us it's year round. We do this year round. Okay, so I'm just saying if they park on the street, then there's a snow emergency of some sort. Well, snow emergencies are always uh, yeah, a different animal in every city. And, and and again, be careful with what you're referring to. Snow event versus or a snow emergency. I'll say it's a formally declared snow emergency. Yeah, sorry about that. And snow event. Well, if we see, if, if it's a snow emergency, I, I, I just yeah, want yeah, to be that's clear a about that. Animal. Snow emergency. If I see a vehicle on the street, every duty has got it, and it's going. It's, it's being towed. We've had some light winters. It's probably been three years since we've declared a snow emergency in, during winter. Thanks. So, Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> it it yeah, yeah. I was jinxed it by talking about it. I'm sorry. That wasn't wood, was it? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. But during a snow emergency, all, all, all bets are off because we're, we're getting the, typically a dumper. It's an eight inch, it's a ten inch. We need the streets clear. We want to service the community and get the streets open. But yes, during just a, a, a regular snow event, it, it is problematic. Because we do have to go back and clean up. That. Sure. Paul Direct, were you still? Uh, yeah, I just, um, so do you agree that the situation that they've shared is like a it's a different animal, if you want to say, and is, is there a way to do more enforcement, things like that, for the problem that they're having over in the, the Lambeau district? I think there are other than 3 to 5 a.m. parking issues that need to be addressed over there, and yes, I do think that there can be some additional efforts put forth on behalf of the city. Um, one thing we do have to be careful about is you. I would want to make sure that we're not exposing ourselves to excess liability by being considered a targeted neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Can raise revenue, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that that is somewhat similar, but also different. Mm -hmm. You know that that particular area. I don't there aren't, there aren't really any other areas in the city that we deal with like that. Is when you think Correct. about, I mean, with the number of cars and all that. Mm -hmm. um, all the rec, you're still? I'm good, yeah, thank you. All the worry, that's your district. Yes. Uh, you got a few notes. You've been writing for a long time. <laughs> okay, so are you ready to? Um, well, yeah, it's a citywide issue. So it's not, I mean, yeah, that, that definitely has it's changed a lot in, in my 20 years. It really did. I mean, you know that. <laughs> As I'm sure you guys will agree, this issue, this issue will drive you to drink. <laughs> not even kidding. <laughs> it's water. Uh, it's a 50-50 it's a issue. When I send out surveys and talk to people, at least in, in my district, the people who get back to me, it's a 50-50. And 
Guy Zima used to always say 50-50 issues are political political loser issues for, for is elected he? people. <laughs> doesn't matter which way you go, you're losing, but that doesn't mean you're still trying to do the right thing. But uh, we've brought this up numerous times, and um, I've moderated my position from where I was in my, my earlier days where I really would have allowed any overnight parking. I really thought that was the right thing to do, and that I still get lots of feedback, as all of us do, stridently wanting that. It's my street, pay taxes for it, I want to park on it whenever I want. I get it, right? Fine. But then you get strident opinions on the other side, very much is because of all the reasons given. And the more people I talk to and see other cities, there's a lot of validity to some of the reasons for not allowing overnight parking. However, <laughs> there are a lot of people who, who could use the extra, and, and that's the part if we could find a magic middle here. And I know we kind of have it, but I don't think it's very well known, you know, the fact that we only have five, right? I don't think people know they can appeal for a family situation where they need more. And so if we could hash that out more, uh, <coughs> I'd be open to that. I, I mean, do you think part of it is that, you know, that it's kind of a hidden gem there? It, it could and be. you're afraid if you open up Pandora's it box? You know, maybe you'll have a lot more people applying, but, yeah. you know, you have an application process. It's not, it's not just willy nilly, you know. Um, there's a reason why there's an application process. Yeah. Administrative so wise, maybe we can develop an official, a little more permit policy and application process, something like that, for a homeowner. You know, maybe duplex. I don't know. We don't want to open it up to multiplex is too big because we're supposed to build it to accommodate people who live there, right? Otherwise, you're going to force it all on the street. <coughs> anything that's above two is required to provide off street parking, correct? Right. Yeah. Two, because two that's not our one anymore. Right. So, so yeah. over duplex and bigger. Duplex and under would be okay. eligible. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And for the, um, the park. for any type of on-street parking. Okay. Yeah. And something I'm, I'm going to explore, and I just wrote a note down here, is maybe I know we we do give out the permits for the Airbnbs, right? Uh, we kind of have to issue it by the state now, but we can take them away. But I think we give out a permit. Maybe we can increase our fee a little bit to fund another overnight parking person around the city. It doesn't necessarily have to be in this area, but. I'm going to bring that up in a future, I don't know if it goes through planning or through us or who, who that might go through. But maybe that's a way to generate some extra revenue to help patrol the areas that they're causing the problem, uh, you know. <laughs> Without targeting them, yeah. they just have a person there. You know, I, I just, that yeah. just came to mind here. There's got to be another way to get some more help because you can't send all the forces over there to ignore the rest of the city, but a lot of the issues are in there. these areas. So I talked a lot and I don't know if I made any well, sense, but... Um, yeah, I have so many emails and notes and phone calls, and right, I'm sure you I've, do too. I've got, got my share. Up. I got my oh, share, I've and I, I brought this up a couple of years ago. Yeah, I found when I did the research on it, you came up being interviewed <laughs> as the one proposing it really? in 2018. Was I yeah. staring at people? Or, <laughs> anyway. No, it, and I, it you know, we bring two. this up, and I know all the worry brought this up again, and I think. Um, I think the fact that there are opportunities, you know, I've, I've had a few citizens who, <laughs> one citizen, her husband took her the car out at 4.15 in the morning, put it on the road, it was warming up, went back in the house, he got a ticket, just so happened that parking utility was coming by. It was, it was a free <laughs> incident, however, you know, and they didn't have enough room for three cars, so uh, this person has requested and it, Sounds like she's very happy with working with the city, with, with the process you have in place. So, um, I grew up in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee was even odd. You know, a bigger city, more density, but we just did it. It was, it was just the way it did it. So, I, uh, the fact that it can a smaller community, you know, we still have, you know, we have density issues here. I mean, a lot of the buildings that we have, you know, a lot of cities, they build up. In Green Bay, we kind of build this way. We don't go this way as much. So you have a lot of concentration in the central cities with, with cars, you know, with, with people with uh, single stall garages and three cars, things like that. But you'd have to pass a policy for the whole city. Far east, far west side, you got four, four garages, you know, four stall garages and all that. <coughs> so I, I've tempered my motion, my feelings too over time with the fact that, that there is an alternative 
that that's helped me understand like okay there is a there is this one solution there. it's not nothing so I I'm, I'm happy with that and if it gets to that point where that's what it's going to be you know, I guess I'd be okay with that so that's it for now for my, anybody else want to chime in all the camera you're throwing <laughs> or not throwing yeah thank you guys did a good job I, I see both sides of it. I see the maintenance, and I see, you know, and I, I live, you know, I, I love a clean street, not a doubt, you know. Um, I think, you know, keeping the waterways clean and clear, and keeping the roads dry, and I mean, there's a lot of, which, which, which one do you want, you know? Uh, you want overnight parking? I mean, I don't have that issue, but. Uh, a lot of people in my district do <coughs> and for the most part from what I've seen it looks like the parking utility doesn't even bother them in some parts of the town whether or not they, that's correct or not I don't know or they're always getting tickets <coughs> or they're always calling it in but whether it be a seasonal type pass I mean it sounds like winter is the biggest issue but again like you've opened my eyes up too so I might have switched the other way to the fact you know what do you want do you want clean streets I mean you got litter I mean overnight parking is gonna make your town dirtier I don't care what anyone says in my point of view it's gonna make it not as safe it's gonna make it but you, you, you know I and the and the stadium and the whole parking on the grass and I mean that's kind of a if they didn't park on the grass then they really have to park on the streets you know so that's even a separate issue so and there's not one size fits all here um, I think a seasonal type pass like I said we have a call in process. Uh, Maybe we got to expand a little bit on that, you know. Um, Educating. And, well, that and I mean every, I mean look at everybody last year or two years now, they stayed at home, so there wasn't even any commute commuting anymore. So that had to create a lot of, a lot of overnight parking, you know, or a lot of overday parking, to where that gives all the utilities a, enough to do. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Okay. Well, I, I think there's, there's got to be some stuff. Yeah. So all the worry you brought this forward, so I don't know how you. Yeah. Wanna, <coughs> yeah. Do we have? And I'm sure we do. The policy for overnight parking, we have that as a red document. It or is a red, red document. Yes. I don't know if it would be best to refer this to staff to either. I can't say develop, but to refine the permit policy and application to allow on-street overnight parking. I mean, we do allow it. But do you see where we're trying to get it to? Uh, Just to have well, part um, of the information. To be let me suggest that because on-street overnight parking, the the parking ban between three and five a.m. is actually an ordinance. So, are you looking to amend the ordinance? Or are you looking to potentially refine the exception policy? Uh, I guess it would be refining the exception policy. Okay, so my suggestion would be the item you have on the agenda is actually to talk about the ordinance. If you're not looking to change the ordinance, receive the place on file uh, this item. We, between Chris and myself, uh, we can get you a copy of what the current policy is and bring a communication forward to provide suggestions on modification of the exception policy. Yeah, you're right, it is. I didn't it specifically say ordinance in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm you're like, right. I want you, I want you <laughs> acting no. on the right thing so that somebody doesn't subject you to yeah. criticism. No, no matter what, what we do here. And, and before yeah. that, we could, we could sit and eat. That, that would be good too. We could, over we could hash something, something out and bring else on these Sure. Because right? mm -hmm. the goal is to accommodate people who really do right. have an issue. It might only be like yeah. we discussed before, something that lasts for a couple of years while their mm -hmm. kids are in driving age and then they're out and they no longer need it. So that's what we're trying to help here without 
putting over the apple cart. Um, yep. No matter what we do, with people get mad or happy. So. <laughs> yeah. So the criticism thing. Mm. <laughs> the it's gonna happen. We're gonna have to open the floor. Uh, oh, you are close already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. I'll make a motion. Open it's just when we're up here, we have to open it up so you can. Just the question. Second. Okay, hold on a second. Motion. You motion. Second. second by zero. zero. Hold on a second. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. It's just we have to do this. Procedural. Stuff. Procedural. You. Your Juan name Chavez, and address again. Juan Chavez, once one zero seven zero shadow. Okay. Okay. Uh, why are we trying to uh, make it more complicated? He said he already has the permits. All they have to do is go on the laptop, apply for the overnight parking, give them your license and your make and everything else, and you're good. What are you trying to, to do well, here? I think those are the temporary ones. Like if you just need it for a weekend or a couple of days. Like we're, we're talking more about maybe a family who does have an extra car because they have more drivers than they did. They have a small lot. Might and they might need year. it for a year or two. And make that process more um, visible and, and written out. So it wouldn't affect everybody, it would just affect the ones who need oh, it. The ones that, okay. And it's yeah. more, it does apply more to the middle of the city because as you go out, lots are bigger, ranges are bigger. But okay, what if uh, down in the Packers district with all those party houses, can they apply for that? Well, and that's where we could look at the policy. It would have to be, I think, the homeowner or maybe a renter at a duplex. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be in favor of that. They should be building and only renting to a amount of people who could stay there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, they're not, well. Yeah, I know. Well, I know. They, should. they should. We've all called and emailed, and I'm going to explore that idea of extra enforcement for that. Cause, <coughs> and that's something we have to keep calling on, because when their permit comes up for renewal, that's something we can use against them and say, hey, is you're, that a yearly you're responsible. Is permit that they need to do? Yeah, they do. it is. Yeah. So call on everything. That's my that that <coughs> might be the meeting you want to get the neighborhood. <laughs> Honestly, call on everything, because it builds a record. I was just, oh yeah, we've been trying. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I mean, first it was just Packer houses, now it's Airbnbs. And well, they're around. calling Packer houses the well, Airbnb. I, I mean, whatever. Yeah. We got those on Shadow, but they're down Thorndale, they're down like three or four streets yeah. down from Maybe us. They're still there. They have to be tightened up, I don't know. And some are good, but I mean, some are very good and they're very careful about who they rent to. Yeah, some are good, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, yeah. some aren't. I know. Um, well, I think we're, we're going to look at this. You know, okay. we're not just, I mean, we've brought it up several times, and this is just another addition that we've talked about with the Lambo field area, more so than we did last time. So it's just something else we will look at, and we will work with staff on this. Okay, so. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. That's all okay. I have. Right. Ms. Angus, you wanted to? Uh, Ms. Angus? Well, just additional information. As a landlord who has a number of tenants over the last I started doing this stuff when I was 10 or 11 working in these buildings oh like I work a lot um, yeah you have to paint you have to take care of things but what you will find out is that when you have a lease you tend to write into the lease no RVs parked in your parking lot no boats parked in your parking lot you limit parking to two automobiles or you end up with five automobiles and then you can't plow your parking lots if you can't plow, plow your parking lots and the other tenants crawl and they yell at you because you don't get the plowing done, even if the streets are still, you know, six feet tall. So, with snow. So you have to, I mean, are RVs going to be able to park on the street? That's a whole other issue. Are vans going to be able to park on the street? Are you going to have people living in the RVs? I mean, you have people who live in RVs and then they use the bathroom of your rental unit to go to the bathroom in violation of some city code, I would imagine. It goes on and on and on. And you know, when you're doing this, you tend to look at people in a very negative viewpoint because you have to really, people are not all nice, you know? I mean, and if they end up parking five cars in your parking lot, three of which don't run, it's a whole other issue. So you're saying some so, landlords will be good with that and others, they won't care? Well, I'm just saying if you're going to change the parking, you know, the ban on the parking, you're going to have to look at, like, people parking three cars that don't run on the street because they can park overnight. You're gonna have to look at, are they gonna park RVs? Are they gonna park vans? Are they gonna live in the van? I mean, I as I was sitting here listening to <coughs> Drug Grenier talk about his issues, you know, I, all of a sudden I was like, wow, you have some very valid points about the security and, and our community. So I think, and, and then the snow removal. Can you imagine people calling Director Grenier after they have six, six feet of snow around their car and then they make the city go out and, and dig them out? 
Because that's, that's what's going to happen. Think, yeah, so, that's why we're trying to hone it down. I know, but yeah, I, I just thought I would. A car. Or I know I'm probably like beating a dead horse yeah, stuff, but no, but no, it's no. it's just really, really a problem. And then I had one. Oh, and then about the Airbnbs. Don't be so negative about the Airbnbs. You know, people buy those and put a lot of money and bring a lot of a lot of good into a community. As far as like, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens too, but. I'll tell you, you know, you, you go down some of those streets over Shadow Lane, there's some beautiful homes there. There's some homes that were very run down that have been, people have put a lot of money into the homes in that area. So I think it's a balancing act. Everything in life is a balancing act. I, I don't bad. think anybody wants to be negative, yeah. but it's more of a enforcement of what the laws are, well, basically. There's good landlords, there's bad landlords, there's good Airbnb owners and you know sometimes you just have bad people that stay there and you just don't know what you're going to get so who knows but anyway I'm sorry I took up more of your time but consider the RV issue I'm telling okay. you all right, all right. thank you all right. thank you okay. motion to be like a Christmas close vacation the floor. Close Eddie, don't pull up. Um, uh, motion to close the floor by act seconded by Second. Campbell well yeah, no. Did he? yeah that's one <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet Okay, said by Campbell, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we're back to it. So all the worry. I'll, I'll make a motion to receive and place on file with the acknowledgement that the policy, we'll, we'll work on the policy and bring that back to accommodate. Okay. Keep. Okay. Well, we talked about it. <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> Don't repeat everything. <laughs> no. I second it. Oh, are second you ready that? for a second? Yes. Will you yeah. Still yeah, no, okay, I'll say there's a happy sure. middle ground here somewhere. Okay. Damn it, we're going to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> keep trying. Okay, we have a motion by Worry, seconded by Heck. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, staff and citizens, for your input. Just because your item's over, though, you don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> We've got yeah, plenty yeah, more to come. You might want to talk one about tree and brush trimmers. Anybody? Can we, like, run some trailers or something on the next meeting? Let's take three seconds to get our breath. Uh, we're moving back up to number two. I think two. the rest is pretty technical stuff. I don't think anything is all right. your area. Yeah, yeah, we're under the table stuff. Well, you want to look <laughs> oh, <stay. laughs> under the table stuff? Yeah. Well, that's all the time. Did well, you want to look? I have a copy of the agenda well, if you want to read it. Okay, here no. we go. No, I don't. It's all public, so not and under we the did, table. And we did move everything up for everybody. I don't do under the table stuff. You're being recorded. Only because, <laughs> I know, I know. Only because I'm really tired. Of it. Yeah. Very tired. Uh, so okay. Okay. Uh, can, we, can we continue here, please? Yeah, yes. folks. Yeah. There's more. There's more. Yeah, we Number two, yeah. consideration with possible action and a request by Alder Stevens on behalf of Shane Zerbel to install two street lights along Van Duren, spelled wrong, by the way, street between Gutfels Street and Spinnaker Lane. Referred to staff at the Wednesday, July 27th, 2022, of Permanent Services Committee meeting. Alder Stevens is not here. Staff? Okay, subsequent to the July 27th meeting of the Improvement Service Committee, staff did go out into the field to take a look at where street lights may be appropriate. This particular stretch of Van Duren is one block south of University Avenue. And if you're familiar with the University Avenue Market, it would be the backside of the University Avenue Market. While staff was in the field looking at potential candidate sites for street lights, we noticed that uh, the wall pack lighting mounted on the backside of the University Avenue Market was not working. So in addition to reaching out to Mr. Zerbel and having a conversation with him, staff reached out to the University Avenue Market. They have gone back, replaced and updated their wall pack lighting, and subsequent to that, Mr. Zerbel has indicated to us that there is quite sufficient amount of light <laughs> on that stretch wants. of Van Duren and has requested to rescind his request. So Yay. staff yes. recommends to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. Oh. <laughs> second. Since it's, second no, since it's the border of my district, I will second it. Second but it was dark Campbell. back there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good wow. job, Mr. Are you crying over no, yeah, it's not he's awful. We get a everybody's happy. What do you, you, you made him leave. Okay, that though. was quick. You so made him leave. That was that was divine <laughs> intervention there. You made him leave. No, uh, not really. Went away happy. That's nice right. All right, number four to approve a professional services contract with Majeski and Masters for the design of the West Leaf mechanical rehabilitation for the Main Street Bridge or the Fox River. 
B5311 and the amount of $253,995. Staff. So we have been working with Majeski and Masters on investigation on the, the Main Street Bridge. Uh, this is again for the hydraulic replacement over there. So they have been working with us on diagnosing what we have and what options would be available to us. So we have looked at things like replacing the hydraulic system with a full electric system using electric motors to lift the bridge. Um, so they've gone through and done a lot of the diagnostics, finding out what's wrong and, and providing an approach, a pathway for us to move forward. And the best part of that is the pathway that they have provided to us is a phased approach. So we don't have to borrow two million dollars all at once. We're kind of taking this in maybe half million dollar chunks over three or four years, where we can afford to do it uh, a little at a time. So there's some. Oh, Go ahead. Weren't we kind of holding our breath for some more federal money? Right? We still are. Okay. <laughs> Well, one of, nice things things about, <laughs> one of the nice things about the segmented or, or, or phased approach is if we're successful in acquiring money, we can do two phases at once. But it's broken up into individual components. So nice. through the investigative phase, and I think at the July meeting we had a, an amendment yeah, to, that, uh, to that investigative phase. We've completed the investigation. <laughs> we would like to continue with M&M to do the actual detailed design and generate plans and specifications. So we're asking to enter into a contract for the actual design, the detailed design of the replacement components. All the rec and then all the camel. I just wondered, is this in your budget? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's all I got. All the Thank camel. You. Just clarification, is that's the Main Street Bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's the one that's that right. we own, that the city owns? Correct. The city owns. Okay, right. that's the only one, right? Yes. Okay, just clarifying that, pick that up the last time. No, is that an issue then with, because you mentioned federal monies, all the worry, you know, I mean, it's, it's owned That's by the true. city, but we could still apply for grants. It resides in, or any bridge over 20 feet. That's that's the no. the span of 20 feet designates the difference between culvert and bridge. Um, so if it has over a 20 foot span, technically just about any bridge in the state qualifies for the state bridge program. It's a matter of sufficiency rating and load restrictions uh, when you get the money. This one, because it happens to reside on a state trunk highway, no, no state trunk highway. It's not. That is a federal straight. primary aid highway. That is US Highway 41. And it also comprises part of what's referred to as the NHS or the National Highway System because in the event of I-43 being inoperable, when the, the Fringo Bridge collapse happened, mm -hmm. the That's official the route of I-43 was mm -hmm. Webster Avenue to University, to, to Monroe, to Maine, okay. to so Broadway, back to Mather, out and out. Mm -hmm. So this does reside also on alternate I-43. So it is, oh. it is eligible for uh, federal funding and what we are attempting to do when we get into uh, the actual construction, there is a local or there is a lift bridge program that the state offers that's a reimbursement program. We will apply for as much reimbursement as we can, but that's a competitive program that you're in with, I believe, eight other bridges across the state. Do we have, oh, just one quick and then I'll get, oh, is, there, is there, um, you know, with the bridge that we have here, we've had issues over the years just with repairs and things like that. Does your department, what, what is your feeling about this bridge at this time, generally speaking? Workable? I mean, you feel, I mean, it needs work, obviously. So All bridges your, do, and one of the things, I shouldn't, I mean, can you? Well, I, I shouldn't take joy in it, <laughs> but the last couple <laughs> of bridge problems that have happened, we had a gear slip and, uh, and vascular pinion failure on Tillman, which was uh, Mason Street. Oh, Just Tillman. this summer, we had a pavement swelling issue due to concrete expansion that caused a jam and damaged the bridge on Walnut. So those are those are the other two bridges. It's not just Nitschke that we're having issues with. So your joy is that it's not well, I, should, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to wish you to clarify that the DOT, but you know, the last couple of ones weren't our bridge for us. Okay. <laughs> joy. Right. Uh, I was just going to make a motion to approve it. Okay.
Motion by Eck. Yes, I am. Motion yes. by Eck. Do we have a second? Second. By Campbell. Any, any other money. discussion? <laughs> it's All in, in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> that was really one for joy. Yes. <laughs> That's good. I like shared that. Yes. See, see what all the other committees are missing. <laughs> yes. Right? This in person yeah. stuff is something. All right, number five, consideration with possible action or request by Department of Public Works to enter in, into a professional services agreement with Multimedia Communications and Engineering Inc., MCE, for fiber optic TDS installation and inspection services staff. As we've talked to you about in the past with the TDS project that's going on across the city uh, that will be going on for the next three to four years, uh, they are installing in excess of 505 miles of fiber optic cable. We want to make sure that that's installed correctly uh, as it relates to public right-of-way or easements. We are understaffed. We cannot provide our inspection services plus inspecting fiber optic. We can inspect to make sure that things have been covered up correctly, but we really don't know if that fiber optic is going to cause a problem with something else. We're not trained in fiber optic. MCE was the contractor who had installed, I believe they installed the city county fiber. Correct. So when the city county fiber project went in in 2008, 2009, they were actually the contractor who put that in. This is what they do for a living. We were fortunate enough to get one of the individuals from MCE to act as our inspector. So it's not a full-time job, and we'll use our standard, you've seen our professional services contract when we contract with somebody, it's the same professional services contract form. Uh, I believe he is charging us eight cents per, uh, eight cents per lineal foot when it's installed in a right of way and 13 cents per foot if it's installed in an easement area. Flip flop? Okay, <laughs> eight cents in an easement, 13 in the right of way. Uh, we estimate that the contract will be worth $135,000 a year. Next question is how do we pay for it? We have, because this project is so large, rather than charging our standard excavation permit fee every time we get one, we've broken the area up working with TDS into what they call DFNs. Yeah, nodes. So there's a node and then a DFN that serves that node. Um, we know how much is in each of the nodes and we've estimated what what it's going to take for our permitting cost, what it's going to cost for inspection, what it's going to cost for locating, all of those things, and that's what we've charged in permitting fees. So the permit fees actually cover the cost of the inspector for the city is revenue neutral. Oh. Move to approve. Uh, second. <laughs> <laughs> he knew we were going to ask that, so I appreciate that yeah. you know we're very all right. responsible. Yeah. I was that one's better than the question, the but I think I like that. that, that I've seen like more so all, right there. all the worried motion seconded by Eck. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, great. That's fantastic. I just one side on, on the side on this, and I, I don't you know, director. I talked to you about these obstruction permits that uh, that these utility companies are getting, and I don't know if you of Walders get. I'll get calls, and somebody says they're digging up my yard. Who is it? Blah blah blah. And I. Go, I don't know. So I don't know if that's something that maybe doesn't totally pertain to this, but somewhat. So is that something that we can talk about? Under E1. Uh, there we go. You're right. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. We've only been here three hours and five minutes. Whoa. Thank you. I'm good. All right, next, number six. Consideration with possible action on a request by Department of Public Works to award the East River Trail and Canoe Kayak Launch Project at a staff level. Staff. Uh, right now, trying to get projects bid and constructed. Yet this year, every day is critical. So this particular project is going to be coming in during September, and there's a there's a oddity in the September schedule mm -hmm. where there's going to be like a two week gap. Uh, between a committee and a council, and we're actually receiving the bids in the middle of that gap, it would result in a three-week delay for us to come through committee and get council approval at the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. So we're just asking for, for, uh, for approval staff. at this time. Yep. So we, we will have that We will award the contract if there's money, if if it makes sense, if it's not overpriced. Yep. You know, the same thing that we're going to be talking about earlier. Right, and that's, that's happened before where we've had We're actually time, doing time it again frames. tonight. Yes. I think I'm, I'm fine with that because I've seen you kick out bids because it was just crazy. So right. I mean, 
guys are yeah. reasonable on this. Yeah. Okay, so we, we have a motion, motion, proof. motion by oh, Siri, second, oh. by second. Uh, second by Eck. Like All in favor, here. please say aye. I know, you're aye. like... All opposed, aye. 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 You're jumping through it. No. Oh, yes. All right, number seven, consideration with possible action on proposed 2023 parking division rate structure. So I'm gonna give you a brief overview and then I'm gonna let Chris take this over. Uh, Chris has again uh, provided you with a, uh, a very nice uh, eight or so page. Uh, yeah, I know. There's a big yeah. Uh, okay. Here you're in sound, yeah. In your spare time? So you have six page uh, document. We calculate it without 270. And what, 270, it, what it does per is uh, it gives you a, a history on what goes into our rate fees and uh, what we've done historically. Uh, the big the big ticket item here, if you will, is the conclusions and recommendations. Uh, taking a look at how things have rebounded since the pandemic. Now, we were lucky that we had a decent uh, cap reserve fund built up in the parking division because we sure tapped into it over the last two years. Right, it's been a rainy, rainy day fund. So as, as people weren't coming downtown as much, uh, especially our ramp counts and our, our meter counts went way down. Now, that's starting to recover. Uh, and, and things are looking up, but we're not getting too crazy uh, optimistic just yet. So based on what we're seeing um, as trends here uh, in downtown Green Bay, we are recommending that we increase uh, rental rates by 5%, rounded up to the, the, the next dime. So that would be anybody that's both surface lots and ramps that have monthly rentals with us. Uh, maintain the meter rate at 95 cents per hour, maintain the Adams Street lot and river ramp hourly rate at $1.10 per hour, maintain the ramp hourly rate at 85 cents an hour, maintain our current citation rates, overtime, parking, and expired meter at $22, no parking and over, overnight on-street parking, $32, no stopping or standing, hydrant, fire lane, or bus stop violation at $42. A one week late fee is $12 added to the citation face value. And a one month late fee is $22 added to the citation value. And it's one $12 in addition to the $12 one, uh, one, day, one week late uh, fee. There is also a larger citation rate history uh, that's provided on page six of six that talks about off-truck route uh, and disabled plate. Remember back in 2020, we made a rather significant change. We went from 150 to 302 for parking in a disabled stall. Uh, it's not a widely abused privilege, but it does happen. Uh, so what we want to make sure is if it happens, uh, somebody knows about it, so they're not going to try it again. So that's kind of just a, a higher level overview of the information that Chris has provided. You, I, I saw, the, I see the citation rate, Chris, maybe you could, the truck off the truck route, you know, fifty dollars. You know, I we're having, you know, in my district, Bond Street is being redone. And a lot of citizens are worried that people are going to be driving trucks down that road again. And, and I, uh, Director Hansen, you know, Dave Hansen mentioned that there's some no parking, you know, no truck route signs. And you know, I, I see them, but it's not like wow, you know. But I would think truck drivers would realize that, you know, what uh, we're not supposed to drive on these roads. And I, I thought I understood, according to him, he stated that a driver could lose a CDL license possibly if he, if he breaks the law uh, on that. Is violation that, of... Is that one of the... Violation of truck road restrictions is something that a CDL insurance carrier is definitely going to look at. So it seems like a lot of times people will say, hey, I'll take the chance. I'll just kind of go down these mm -hmm. few blocks, no problem, if there's nobody there. Then here's what he told me. And this is another point. You know, we have four traffic officers for the entire city. He said if we had 16, Eight on each side of the, it would deal with speeding, it would deal with all this stuff. It would be a lot more efficient. But that's another 
point. <laughs> Have them call that trucking, whoever the trucking company is. We had that problem in Oneida for a while, and there was an ex city employee who lived down there who religiously would call it in, and it, and it worked. Eventually, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. No, with, but with that in mind, if there is a destination that is not on an established truck route, a trucking company has the right to take the most direct path immediately to that destination and immediately back to the nearest truck route. So there are opportunities where trucks are allowed to be off the truck route, but they can't use Bond Street as a cut through between Taylor and Military. Thank you. Oh, but your house, okay, your house on Stephen, if an appliance company was delivering a washer and dryer to your house. They got to get off the truck route to get them. Oh, yeah. But they have to take the most direct route to your house and the most direct route back on. Right. Okay, that was just one point, but yep. uh, Chris, I don't know if you had things to add to this. No, I just yep. said quick FYI if I want to drain it out. One of the main driving, uh, uh, less main driving reason for this, this significant, if you will, you can see the history of rates that have typically been it's two or three percent. Some years zero. I don't know if we're going to ever see that again. Yeah. Uh, is the, the supply, demand, price of steel, uh, which lends to vehicles and equipment, parking equipment, electronics. You know, we live in that world. Now. We don't ever get away from it. Fuel and, uh, and um, you know more fuel and electricity. You know, we, we have a lot of lights and ramps and lots. Oh yeah. No, I, no, we understand that. That's why, in a way, I was surprised that things didn't really raise all that much, except for that rental. That was the only thing that really. Well, and then just one other thing we do want to make you aware of. I've been having a conversation with the mayor's office. As we have been going, we have an annual contract for ramp repairs, and we spend about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year doing maintenance work on our ramps to keep them functional and, and moving forward because. Cars park there during the winter, cars drip, there's salt in there, salt's bad for ramps, okay? There's a lot of things that go on in a ramp. It's not a real hospitable environment. Um, so you have to be up to date on your maintenance. I believe the Cherry Street ramp was constructed in 2002 or 2004. So 2004, 2005, we are getting up near, we're nearing the 20 year mark. Okay, that's when you start to see some significant maintenance activities. Um, Main Street is our oldest facility and it's starting to show its age. And we are anticipating that over the next several years we could be putting as much as a half million dollars a year into Main alone. If you remember, for those of you who've been on the committee or council for a while, those of you who haven't, this will be new information to you. When Schreiber Foods Incorporated decided to locate their global uh, technology center and home office in downtown Green Bay, there was an option in that development agreement that no later than August of 2031, the Main Street ramp goes away. And they have the right to purchase that property. 2031 is only nine years from now. Okay, the first 11 years of that agreement went by really, really quickly. And now we're looking at expending a half million dollars a year over each of the next nine years just to keep that thing functional so we can tear it down. I don't know that the expenditure of four to four and a half million dollars on something I have an intent to rip down in less than a decade is the best use of money. So Jim and I have had conversations with our assistant city engineer in special projects that we are going to do an in-depth evaluation over the course of this winter and on into the spring to find out, is it time that maybe we no longer have our Main Street ramp? We may decide to pull the trigger on that one sooner rather than later. Is that a problem for Schreiber then? Do no, because agreement? really there are a very few number of people who are parking that ramp daily. It's when there are events at the Kayak Convention Center. Schreiber's at Pine Street ramp. Actually. Schreiber's primarily at Pine. Okay. okay. With APAC or Aurora or whatever they were called when they left, okay, that was a call center that was in the Bay Lake City Center building. When they no longer were in Bay Lake, that freed up about 700 stalls in Pine. So we bought ourselves a couple of years of capacity by doing that. Um, 
So we are probably going to have a, a fairly significant investment in demo costs sometime in the not too distant future, but we are going to be looking to replace that ramp. And 681 stalls in Maine, 800 stalls in Cherry, 1,843 stalls in Pine. In Pine, when we take Maine down. We have a parking study uh, that's going on right now, or we'll be coming to you with a recommendation to award a contract to a consultant to, do it, to update our 2013 parking study uh, very, very shortly here. Part of that parking study is going to look at parking demand and parking supply and where the next ramp is going to be and how big it's going to be. My estimation at this point in time is the next ramp that gets built is probably going to be in the 1200 stall range. Conservatively, not including land acquisition, that is a probable 33 to 36 million dollar expenditure for a parking ramp. Mm -hmm. So, just something to be thinking about in the not well, too distant future. Well, you're throwing four and a half million away in a sense. I mean, they're talking about over time, but that's still, you know, you're right. right. Things that, that so, we're, we're taking a very, very hard look at that Main Street ramp right now. Okay. Well, um, so we just have to. I mean, is there anything else, staff, you wanted to add to this? I mean, I no. I appreciate the work. We appreciate the work on and this. And then the parking rate structure. The reason we're bringing the parking rate structure to you at this time is, if this parking rate structure is approved, then we can use these numbers for revenue projection, and that goes into the parking budget, which comes to you in November. Committee. Anybody? Can we, can we lower the cost of overnight parking? Two hundred seventy thousand. No, well, it was thirty-two dollars if you park it. I thought it was twenty. It's thirty-two. Overnight. Man. Um, I had a couple. I guess. Yes, I have two. All right. So, what are, what are, what are, what are our pleasures for this? Move to approve. Okay, by where is second? Second, second by Campbell. He can be on the seat. Most things here. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 We're getting there. Reluctant. We're getting there, staff. All right, number eight. Consideration with possible action on the review and, and award of the following contracts. A, do you want to take this one another time? Or that's so up to you. No, that's who will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say good. All right, way to go. A, WSG 2-22 reproof and B, sewers 2-22 mini sewers. Okay. Uh, the Westside Garage re-roof, uh, we received <coughs> four bids. Low responsive, responsible bidder was Northeaster Roofing at a bid price of $949,981. For sewers 2-22 mini sewer, we did receive four bids. Kip Gulseth Construction uh, Company was the low rot responsive Responsive, responsible bidder at a contract price of $479,179.55. Staff recommends approval of both contracts to the low responsive, responsible bidders. Move to approve. Move by act to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Campbell. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. Moving along. Number nine, report the award of the contract pavement 5 22 Eliza Street reconstruction staff. Okay, so we we're just reporting out to you that staff did receive bids on the Eliza Street construction project. Four bids were received, Benton Construction Company being the low resp uh, responsive, responsible bidder in the amount of $725,447.37. That was within the money that had been bonded for the project, so staff did make the award to the construction company. We're simply looking for a motion to receive and place on file the report. I'll make a motion to receive and place on file. Second. Okay. Campbell, seconded by Eck. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Number 10, consideration with possible action on acquisition of rights of way required for the reconstruction of the pedestrian ramp at the southeast corner of South Washington and Crook Street. Um, well, do I have to read this? Part of the, 
tax parcel number 13-11 for the amount of four hundred dollars correct so it's just a uh, a small vision corner for the head ramp or it, it's a small piece of property behind the sidewalk where the pedestrian ramp is so we have the room to get in there and build a pedestrian ramp this is what we refer to as a nominal take uh, so it's a it's a, a minimum established value for a commercial property in the downtown area oh. at $400. The rights of way, so it's an acquisition? Yeah, we will system. actually own that right of way in perpetuity now. So it's just the, what, 66 foot right wide and by how far? No, no, we're only buying like a little corner behind okay. the head ramp so that we can get in there. I you see. can do it one of two, one of several ways. You can do it with, as we're doing, we're proposing this in a fee take where we actually own it. You can do a permanent limited easement for transportation purposes where they own the property. Uh, it doesn't change the tax, the tax uh, amount on the property because we're, we're literally buying or picking up like six square feet. Um, or you can do a temporary limited easement where we're allowed to go in there, do the work we need to do, restore it, and then we go away. But if we have to go back and do work again, then we've got to take the easement out again. Okay. Temporary limited easements and permanent limited easements we pay the same dollar value as if we buy it in fee. So if we're paying 400 bucks, we might as well own it. Sounds like it's a motion to approve, Hibby. Second. Where is second on my call? Call in favor. Like Please second. say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes <laughs> unanimously. Okay, number 11. Report of actions taken by the Department of Public Works. Uh, one in uh, granting of licenses, sidewalk builder. Do we? Uh, we can take them all at once. Let's take them all at once. So, sidewalk builder, lake, A, lakefront flat work and construction, B, BMD concrete innovations, C, Delirious construction, D, TC concrete products, LLC, E, L, Dix concrete, Inc. We'll just stay with that. Or we can do two tree and brush trimmer, A, Fox Valley tree care and landscaping. Sure. Stamp. Recommend approval of all. Make a motion to approve all. Motion by Eck. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Campbell. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. That passes unanimously. We, we're finally getting to the informational. So we have discussion on utility and ins installation projects citywide and impact the residents. I jumped the gun earlier. I apologize for that. So. You're right. We refer to you. All right, well, uh, and like I said, as alders, you probably get calls occasionally from folks that say, hey, they're digging up my yard. Who is it? And I, then I go, I don't know. And I'll go over there and take a look. And it, it could be any number of utilities or fiber optic companies. And I did have a discussion with uh, Director Greener last week in his office, and we talked about that. And he said a lot of, a lot of places will, a lot of these companies will get obstruction permits that they pay for, but occasionally someone sneaks through and doesn't do that. So it makes us difficult. Makes it difficult for us to tell our citizens, well, what, what is going on? So uh, I spent maybe 20 minutes talking to one of the gentlemen for this fiber optic company. He rested my uh, needs of knowing about that, and then I could call my citizens. So basically, it seems to me like. Most companies are pretty good about getting the obstruction permits, but I thought I would just let you kind of expound on that a little bit. Sure. One of the things that uh, that I want to call attention to with the, with the larger fiber optic projects that are going on right now, especially the TDS Metro Crown project and the AT&T project that are happening uh, across the city, Jim deserves all the credit on this, uh, Jim Burnett. Jim has been working tirelessly with both of those companies on refining and upgrading their communication processes with our residents. We had an issue last year um, over on the far west side and it, it got ugly in a hurry uh, because AT&T wasn't communicating with the residents. They have, there are obligations under Wisconsin Administrative Code for the Public Service Commission uh, specifically under PSC 130 that tell what utility companies, not just telecom, but any utility company, what they have to provide municipalities as far as design, what they have to, the minimums they have to put in, and basically what it, 
refers to as the in, it's the industry standard. So if all telecom companies get together and decide we're not going to send letters out to residents, that means nobody has to because that's the industry standard. And if we require something above and beyond the industry standard, we we have to pay to have that done. We're, we're financially responsible for it. So Jim's done a great job working with these companies, identifying and using uh, that that AT and T issue from last year as kind of a case study. As this is what happens when you guys don't communicate. So largely due to his uh, working with the utility companies, we now have a pretty robust communication. So as TES or at and is coming into a neighborhood, they are sending letters out to the residents. They're doing literature drops on door handles. What to expect. It's in their best interest as well right. uh, to not only have good communication, but to let people know what's going on because they're also looking for people to sign up for their fiber optic service. Right. Uh, so, so this wasn't the case for at times? I mean, uh, until this happened recently? I mean, uh, before we that? We didn't have this this scope, this size a of a project of, going a on. Projects going on. Um, but over the past couple of years, um, utilities in the public right of way has become a focus of mine. That's, that's just a mission that I'm on because I think you've heard me say, we, the, the right of way is a very finite resource and we're getting more and more stuff in there as we deal with legacy systems that are abandoned in place and the need to replace those systems and find a home for everybody. And we didn't have telecom services until the 1920s and that was AT&T and they were on the line, okay? Um, fiber optic is within the last seven years or so. Gas, electric being buried underground or on poles, because above ground, below ground interferes with each other because the pole needs to be buried where the sewer goes, okay? So a lot of that kind of stuff, how does everybody find a home and how do we equitably share that, that space? Uh, I've, I'm actually part of a, a, a focus team with the American Public Works Association that is referred to as UPRO, the Utilities in the Public Right Way. So that's, I'm working on a national basis to do some of this stuff. Uh, and like I said, Jim has been very instrumental in, in do, doing, taking that information here at the local level and working directly with these folks. Uh, that now is being extended out to some of the smaller contractors. Somebody who's not doing miles and miles, but rather is doing 300 feet and they think they're just going to sneak in here and knock it off and get out and save themselves $85 in permit fees. Well, if you get caught, that could be a lot worse than the $85. Is this all being documented in a sense? Because I know that these companies are all on their own platforms, if you will, but as far as, you know, for the city, you know, we have our GIS system showing sewers and sanitary and all sorts of things. Uh, when they, when, a, when somebody else has a project like that that's within the city right away or located here, is there some kind of documentation that you folks have that you know where this is, or is that something that you don't have? No, we don't. So the way to obtain that information, typically you would need that information if you're doing a project and you want to make sure you don't hit something. Mm -hmm. So when you call into a one call system, you can call in the diggers hotline. That's when they go out in the field. They and have, they have. Yep. But there's really nothing we can look at and say, oh, okay, this has been done, this area isn't, blah, blah, blah. That's not available. No. Well, one thing I'll add to that, though, is for the TDS project, because they're actually installing about 500 miles of cable throughout the city, is that's, you remember that item on the agenda for MC&E to do the inspection. That's one of the tasks that they have, is to work with TDS. If there's a change done on the field, they coordinate the change of plans so that we actually have a record drawing of how things are done. But well, unfortunately, that's a vendor. We don't have that for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. And there's a handful well, of vendors out there installing this stuff. I think for me, you know, for the alders, it's just that if somebody's doing some work, it'd be nice to know what it, what is there. And if you mentioned that, like this TDS, that they're hanging stuff up on doors and they're contacting the citizens, well, that helps because then the, I, we won't get the calls. Right. Uh, just piggybacking on that, sorry, I, I just yeah. had one on Raleigh or Thornvale or something like that. They called me last week because we were sending whole flags out and the city wasn't sure and WPS wasn't sure and Beaver's Hotline didn't know. Nobody knew, you so I couldn't help. You couldn't help. I still don't know what's going on. But. 
And just because the flags go out doesn't mean construction. Sometimes the flags go out because, well, so somebody somebody might be doing a property line survey for the house, and they call Digger's Hotline because they're looking at getting all that stuff out. Yeah. It's planning looking. Piggyback on that, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, you see all the different colored flags for projects. Uh, is there something in Public Works in the manual or that that says, okay, this color is for this? this Digger's Hotline tells you that. Digger's Hotline will tell you that. Yeah. I just thought, well, well, this little piggy down here. <laughs> All right. Anything else on this? Otherwise, I, I just got some questions on updates and for this utility. No. So no. Well, we're just the yeah. okay. Uh, motion to receive and place on file. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. By X. Second by Weary. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Well. So, uh, I don't see it. I don't see a direct Oh, just well, got left off. Uh oh. Well, then you so, don't get one. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, anything I was, was going to give you the same report <laughs> that the director did. Uh, saying I don't report. have, I don't have anything in particular. But if you have any questions, which would open uh, the extra time. All the, I, all the panel. Or <laughs> who are you first? <laughs> well, he he and then I have two things. Okay, all the panel. Okay. I have two. Go Update on the city fish and docks. City docks. They, like I said, they are, they were, they were all for bit, they were waiting on them to come in. We're in. We have a contractor selected. They're doing shop drawings right now. And after shop drawings are generated, it'd be roughly eight to 10 weeks. So we're anticipating still an installation possibly this fall. This fall. Uh, the fishing club they're calling now. Ahead. Trust me, I want them in more than anybody. <laughs> okay. So this, is it? I'm trying to come up with an answer for a constituent on there's a corner property over by your house at the end and she's like why doesn't somebody build there how, how do I handle that I, like where can I I mean I could probably go under Brown County land I don't know if there's something on here she wants to know who owns it and why isn't there something being built there? I don't know the city planning, owned it or I think that would be the planning and community development I mean it I gotta give her an answer like well, what's the difference you know yeah, I, I would have community development look at that. You know, Where do I find the answer? Refer them. Refer them. Who owns it? Right. Well, to find out who owns it, you can simply go to the city's website. Okay. And there is a on the left hand margin. Okay. I thought there so. is a button over there that says open, open data. Okay. If you click on that, right. punch in the parcel Thank number you. or the address. Everything about that parcel will pop up on the screen. All right. Sure. All right. I, I knew there was a way to do it. I yep. just couldn't remember where. Thank you for the. Okay. Uh, you finish all the. Yeah. Time? Okay. All direct. Very quickly. Very quickly. Probably a little random, but one of them is we always think of this after everybody's gone, but those pictures need to be updated. <laughs> so I don't know who needs to do it. That, but yeah. they're that very old. Needs to be coordinated through the mayor's office. Okay. Oh, there okay. You go. So we have well, to contact the mayor. Just contact the mayor's <laughs> office. Okay. Best of luck. All right, All right, and um, the second thing, I, second thing is, um, one of the things I noticed. Um, so we go through the committee, and we we may will um, recommend approval or whatever. But I, it doesn't always get updated on that the little form that gets put in the agenda packet. You know, the, with with the blue lines, and it's got it'll say recommendation. Uh, just a thought that it doesn't always say well, recommended. Because I, I when I first, you know. Came on council. I looked at that and I was like, it doesn't really say. It doesn't always say. So, so at, who, at council, you're that? saying that the, you don't have what, what was stated. It's, right, the like meeting? the committee recommends it. Shouldn't that be under there? It's a thought. I, I don't know. Because that's what the form is for. So just, I'm just putting that out there. I don't know who does that. Do you know what I'm that saying? Would, that would well. We go through and we we we. Well, each department handles their own. Each committee does. Well, each committee does. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess. Do you have an incentive? Maybe you can show. I don't know. Well, well it's 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 in our packet, you know, here, and it has the blue lines, and it says what it is, and then underneath it, there's a spot where it says recommendation. Oh. And then if we're referring no. it to the full no, council, no, no. should it say what the committee? That's that's a staff recommendation that's coming forward to the committee. Okay, so but it doesn't. It most time doesn't say anything. 
we we just don't put the staff recommendation. She's talking on the, uh, yes, the okay. individual. I, yeah, right. like that. Um, but then here, I thought the recommendation. That we then don't when it goes to the in. full committee, You'll I talk thought it about should it. say that it's recommended by the committee. That that's that's not what this does. Oh, okay. All right. This this would be the staff recommendation to the committee. Okay. Not the committee recommendation to the so council. The committee recommendation to the council question, is the report. Is action. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But a lot of times it's empty, so that's my whole point is it doesn't what say. What happened? Because you said you don't use it. It's not used. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that anybody does. Well, I don't really it's, look at it. I'm, I'm well, just pointing out that it's there. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, know what, I know what you're asking, so. Okay, I just wondering it. Could, about it. Yeah. Well, I want you to sleep tonight, so. <laughs> Hey, I said it was random, but the picture thing we literally think of every time we, yeah, we and everybody's gone, and we're like, man, yeah. who do we get to talk to about and, the picture? Uh, and the map? The map? <laughs> Something? The map? The map? The, map. No, the map of all the streets that are going to be fixed? Someday. Yeah. Like they used to have well, in the clerk's office that big map when you'd walk in. Remember that? The clerk's office was that huge map of the city. And you could the district? Yeah, that was. But I want to see the roads. I want to see right? the roads that are upgraded. And Yep. I want to see that. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll we did talk about that at, on, yeah, this will be on the website. This is going to be the new parks and INS. Just you know, said somebody else is here. We might as well just take it over and start putting stuff up. Hey, they're what coming. Want some street yeah. signs and stuff in here? All right. Are we all done here? Public I hearings. We got public done. hearings. No, we good. Didn't. So I would suggest uh, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. By act. Do we have a second? Second. Campbell. Second. I next meeting, well, actually, next meeting is September 14th. So. Uh, Thank you all. Aye. Oh, do we all do we all approve? Yes. Aye. 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 And I have left the meeting. Yes. Good job. Good job.